All right, I'll try not to overdrive this time. Thank you, sir. Already getting signal reports. Speaking of signal reports, real quick, everybody knows there's a signal report on your table. Uh, it's just a little quick feedback survey that we'd love to have you fill out um, um, as we go through the program. We sure would appreciate your feedback. It's a great opportunity for the leadership team um, board to hear from you about what you like and what you dislike. Um, so with that, I'd like to welcome you to the September uh, Delta Amateur Radio Club membership meeting. Uh, it is that night, it's September 10th, and we're just having a good time tonight. If I could ask real quick, Perry, if you'll open us with a roll call, please. President Joe Plum. Here. Vice President Tyler Henley. Here. Treasurer Jim Martin. Here. Secretary Perry Hayes, present. Director of Programs John Reiner. Here. Director of Training Joe Lowenthal. Here. Director of Meetings and Special Events Scott Adams. Absent. Computer Trustee Dan Fleet. Here. Director of Publications Mike Harrison. Mike is working the door. And Public Information Officer Adam White. Here. We do have a forum, Mr. President. Thank you, Perry. Appreciate that very much. So uh, I want to take a minute and just do a quick little welcome activity and bring back uh, two things. One, a throwback from the past that we haven't done in a good long while and something uh, new. Um, I would like to ask, is there anybody that got their ham license tonight? You could stand up. All right. Everybody for that? All right. We'll go back one more month. Anybody gotten their ham license within the last month? Yeah, upgrade. Or an upgrade. We'll take an upgrade. All right. All right. Stand up and introduce yourselves, and I'll give the winners here. Do you get a special extra ticket into the bucket? Right. I'm Jeff Marlin. And I got my extra last month. Fantastic. Oh, you got the Well, I don't know. Oh, uh, I'm Scott Robbins, and I got my extra about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Congratulations, gentlemen. That is phenomenal. All right, so the second activity I'd like to do is I'd like to go around the room, around each table, and everybody stand up and introduce yourself with your name and your call sign, please. I'll we'll start right over here. Actually, I'll start with myself. I'm Joe Plunk. I'm November Sierra for Echo. Bill Darren, K4 PSA. Bill Sanders, K4 JFS. And I'm John Duty, KK4 LST. I'm Kayla uh, Nikki, I'm K, KQ4 KLJ. I'm Bob O'Grady, I'm not going to stand up tonight, but I'm Kilo Oscar 4, Zulu Charlie Jr. <laughs> Norm Rodriguez, KO4QLD. Tim Levy, KQ4FBF. Hey, Dr. Warner, Brad Mike Alvinetti, KD4IHD. Mike Sparks, KW4RI. And Raxton Fuller, KM4OHD. Clemenoy Bookie, KQ4TQB. Billy Freeman, WL4B. Rick Hanchett, N0KYM. Richard, K4, DXF. It's a test to see when you get up. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Gilman, WA4MB. Barry, W5CJ. Barry, one. WP4SWP. <laughs> That's very lovely. Janet, KN4FBI. Dan, KN4FBJ. Josh Cunningham, KE4IOS. Jim Martin, KB4FUU. Gary Hayes, November 4, Golf Julia. Randy Red, KQ4HJH. <coughs> Joe, WA4LBO. <coughs> <coughs> Dana, WI3B. Tom, AC5, and Will Martrana, KQ4FUM. Jeff Harlan again, KQ4TUW. I'm looking for one of those cool Wendy signs you guys got. Or short. 
Scott, thank you for TGW. Don, Angie for GW. Jeff, thank you for MX. And W4 GMM. And A for XTV. Dan, AA4 DF. Tyler, KB4 QED. John, Dan 4 BBH. Excellent. Thank you, Oh, we have a sneaker in. Jim, KJ4 TCE. All right. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> All right, so that hopefully allows people to recognize faces and call signs that you may have heard and put the faces to names, or at least for me, it'll take me about five, six more times, and I'll start putting names to faces. So that's how that works. So thank you for indulging that welcome activity. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so with that, we'll move into our new business section of the club meeting. We've got to read and approve the minutes. I make a motion we approve the minutes. And the treasure report is published in the box. So there's a motion seconded by Randy, motion made by him to approve the minutes and treasure report is published in Sparks and seconded by Randy. Uh, all in favor of that motion, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? The motion carries. All right, we'll take a moment now and we'll go around the room real quickly for our board member reports. We'll just run down the list real quick. Uh, Tyler's got the look of, uh, oh no, I'm first on the list. <laughs> yes, you're first on the list. Tyler, do you have anything you'd like to report? No comment. No, no report. <laughs> Very good. Perry, do you have any report? I do not, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Jim, do you have any report for our treasurer? Nothing yet, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, John, do you have anything as programs? Uh, yeah, uh, next month we are uh, honored to have the National Weather Service going to speak to us about Skywarn. month after that we're going to have a presentation about Linux, still working on some other ideas. So if there's anything you guys uh, uh, want to see us do, just uh, let me know. Uh, the programs at uh, Thank you, John. Much appreciated. All right, Scott's uh, being stand stood in tonight. Josh is standing in for him, but Scott did not have anything tonight. Uh, Mike's working the door for us uh, as our director of publications. Joe, would you like to talk about training? Uh, right now, we don't have a class uh, planned. Uh, probably we'll have a general class starting the uh, first part of November and then an extra class the first part of January. Uh, the Huntsville bus trip, uh, we did uh, have a about $284 or $286, 284 profit uh, on the Huntsville bus trip uh, thanks to an anonymous donor it gave a uh, fairly substantial but uh, uh, money uh, it averaged out about a hundred and forty four dollars a person for this trip so uh, it was a nice uh, nice donation uh, we thank uh, that person but Hopefully, uh, we'll have some more training coming up, uh, and the next tech class will probably start mid-February. Uh, it's usually the rotation. So just to recap, Joe, just so I can make sure, you said we had a class potentially starting in November? Was that what I heard? General, general probably starting the first part of November. General in November, okay. And then Thank. extra in the first part of January, and then tech middle to late February. Right, so extra January ish and then attack in February, roughly. Look for spark more detail and information in Sparks for those actual dates. Um, with that, we'll move into, and I'm actually going to change my agenda real quick. I'll do committee reports, but I'm going to do the nomination committee real quick first, and then we'll move into committee reports. So, quick change of agenda. Um, part of what the club does um, is we have elections, elections are in November. Um, in the September meeting, we uh, form a nominations committee that so, uh, takes nominations for members of the board. Um, I have polled our current board. And we uh, Most of the board is going to stay intact. We do have a couple of positions that are going to move around a little bit. But to satisfy the formalities, we need to have a nomination committee uh, so that we can make sure that we follow our bylaw rules. So I've asked Mr. Perry Hayes to be the chairman of that nomination committee. 
But Perry needs two other members to serve with him on that committee, and I'd like to open the floor for volunteers to help Perry with that nomination committee. Uh, do I see anybody that would be willing to help Perry with that committee? You could sh uh, show of hands. All right, so Josh is one. All right, Don, got the So Perry, you got Don and Josh to help with you. So that, um, I'll cover just kind of briefly. We're going to have um, an opening in our director of programming. Uh, talk to John, and John is going to uh, uh, step out in December or January and pursue some other activities that he's very passionate about and with. Uh, we thank him for his service. Uh, we're going to have a very um, good replacement step in it because Adam has agreed to step over from PIO into our director of programming position. Now, I want everybody in the membership to understand that this does not preclude anyone stepping forward and saying, hey, I'd like to be in that position too, and the club can choose. Um, but that will leave, if that goes to plan, that will leave the PIO open, or leave our historian open, and our legal counsel open. Now, we do have one other position, and that is Mike Harrison's position as director of publications. Mike has asked if someone would be willing to step up and help um, put him out of a job. He's not going to leave us without him uh, serving in that position, but he would like to find a replacement. So if I could ask the membership, all of those that are here, all of those that are looking at this on, uh, in, in the, uh, as a replay potentially, to think about stepping forward as a member to be uh, the director of publications, and uh, Mike Harrison will, uh, would certainly appreciate that. So with that, that's six meetings. There is a there is a, uh, a membership requirement to be able to serve that you have attended six meetings throughout the 12 month period, and uh, so if you've got that and meet the qualifications, please let the nominating committee know that you're interested in the position. Are there any questions on that from the membership? Fantastic. Um, I do want to take just a minute and ask. Uh, as a quick segue before we get into the committee report, uh, kind of shuffling just a little bit because I know we've got a long committee report and I want to make, maximize the time to get that committee report. Um, are there any additional announcements that the membership would like to make to the membership? I know that and I asked someone to join us tonight um, and she just rolled in so I'm going to put her on the spot. Um, about uh, the Blue City Bike Event in October. If I could ask Miss Mary Jean uh, if you could come up and give us just a quick kind of history of what that event is and how the Delta Club helps that event. I know you've helped a lot with that in the past. We sure would appreciate that. By the way, Mary Jean's the former past president. Thank you. All right. Hey, everybody. It's good to see you all again. I've been trying to get some more uh, meetings this summer, but I think I didn't have a conference or a training or a sheep show or something. Uh, it was probably something else this school, so I'm glad to be here anyway. But, all right, so Bluff City Blues, it is October 12th this year. Uh, that's something where a lot of you, uh, I'm assuming, still do. And I know back in the day, you used to put down, when you filled out your membership application, that you wanted to do something in the community. Or you wanted to get more familiar with your radio, so if something actually did happen, uh, that you're comfortable with it in a different kind of situation that's not in the comfort of your own home. And so this is something that's a great opportunity. It's a community service event. Uh, but Bluff City Blues Ride, what it is, it's a 100 mile, it's a 100 mile bike ride. Uh, and it starts uh, kind of in, I can't remember exactly where it starts. Uh, but over, uh, it's over kind of just outside of. Uh, Watkins is 51, isn't it? Thank you. Yeah, Watkins is 51. Uh, I think last year they were at, it was a little RV park uh, that we were able to set up for. And forgive me, I haven't looked to double check that ex exact spot again, but uh, it's over in the Watkins and 51 area. Uh, we typically get there, I don't know, around 6 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, but we've got different people set up at the different uh, SAG stations, which means supply gear uh, throughout the course. So the course for this ride, uh, they've got shorter rides, but then the 100-mile ride goes all the way up through Holly Grove, Drummond's. Uh, it'll actually go all the way up to the Burleson, Tennessee <coughs> area in Tiffin County. Uh, so they do cover a pretty far distance for 
Shelby County and Tipton County. And in case you're not familiar with uh, the Burleson area of Tipton County, there's a lot of hills and there's a lot of valleys because uh, you're right there uh, getting into that bluff area. So um, they have a tremendous need for ham radio operators. So they'll have some stations set up, but we also need people uh, either with maybe some SUVs or maybe some trucks. Uh, that can be able to haul some of the bicycles uh, in previous years. I think the past few I feel like have been pretty good, uh, but in previous years I know we've had a few situations where uh, people, uh, I think somebody, I can't remember if it was another race or that, but we've had anaphylactic shock. Uh, we've had uh, somebody uh, we thought got hit by a car, but I think it turned out to be uh, something where they just took a really hard bike crash, but uh, you know, when they get it, when they get injured, and if there's no cell service out that way, uh, we are the ones that are there to uh, to help. So uh, if we're out there and we've got enough people who can be throughout the course, they're able to call in to net control. And then if it was an emergency, we could call 911 and coordinate them to get out there in that area if they don't have cell phone service. So. Um, there is a critical need for it if it is, but even if they're, hopefully it's a quiet day uh, and at a bare minimum, I know they always seem to appreciate us being out there because there's so much of that course when you get out in Stephen County where there's, there's just no cell phone service. So um, we'll probably need some. I'm sure Steve uh, will uh, send out an email here pretty soon. I would say if you are interested uh, or want more information, I could probably get a sheet uh, to start a sign up just ex expressing interest uh, if you want to come see me tonight and I can get that to him uh, but uh, you know most of you if you've done this before uh, we probably appreciate you coming back if you have not uh, even if you're a brand new ham don't let that deter you because normally we try to get enough people where we can pair up experienced hands with uh, not so experienced hands so uh, or if you're experienced, but you might not have the equipment out there. I know Tom, typically we've relied on him to, to get out there near the Randolph uh, station in the past um, just because he's got the antenna that can show us all out. So, uh, But, I mean, some lo locations, though, we can typically set up uh, the uh, crossband repeater. So if you, all you've got is a handheld, bring your handheld. You know, kind of learn how the races go and the courses are set up. Uh, and then we can set that up at, at certain uh, distances or certain locations as well. Uh, but normally um, it'll probably start, uh, I think the race is set to start at 7.30. So we try to be, especially towards the start, we try to be set up by about 7 o'clock that morning. Uh, we um, have different stations closed at different times. And then uh, if, you have to, if you can't stay the whole day uh, and you say, hey, I can only stay until about... Uh, 12 o'clock, uh, you can let Steve know and he can try to schedule you or put you into a spot uh, that might need to leave earlier and then anybody else. I think typically the latest they try to be done, I want to say around 3 or 4 o'clock uh, that day and uh, anybody who doesn't make it, any of the riders who doesn't make it to a cutoff by a certain time, uh, that group is pretty good about cutting them off and then they would have to hit your ride back. So. Um, and it is a reasonable setup on the time. It's a lot of fun. It's a great group. Uh, and uh, if you like the adult beverage, normally they uh, give us a little wristband at the end, uh, so that way you can go over and enjoy lunch um, or, or dinner or whatever, uh, and then get a, a drink or two. Uh, usually at the end barbecue. Of what? Usually barbecue. Yeah, I think normally they serve barbecue, and then one of the local breweries will come uh, as well. If you're of age, I should say, uh, then that is a, that's a fun option as well. But uh, I will say, out of the, a lot of the races we do, they are some so a group that definitely uh, they really like to express their appreciation, and it really seems to make a difference when we can be there. So, uh, if you've got time on October 12th, I would encourage you to consider it. Uh, if you're wanting to do more to give back to your community. It. Uh, it's a lot of fun, uh, and I'll say I think you know a lot of folks once they go over there and do that, uh, typically kind of come back and and help unless something comes up with the schedule. Does anybody have any questions? You get a shirt out of it. You do typically get a shirt out of it as well, so um, it's it's a great a great event. All right. Well, I'll have a list. I'll get a list going. So if you are interested, come see me. 
Uh, today, and I get your name and phone number uh, and email and then get to see you, okay? Thank you, Mary Jean. Appreciate that update and uh, insight on that. All right, uh, last call. Any questions on uh, on that bike ride event and how we might support that as a club activity? All right, I want to move into some committee reports. I know that we've got a pre, uh, our repeater uh, team has a report that would like to present, so I'm going to call Dan up and let you have the floor for repeater committee. So while he's moving up, I do want to say that the repeater committee needs more people. So if you're welcome and interested and want to learn more about repeaters, we need more hands and need more feet to help us out with our repeater fleet uh, so that uh, Dan and some other people aren't doing it all by themselves. So with that, I'm going to hand the mic over to Dan. Yay. Yay, me. Um, I should have ran. Um, having fun with the repeater stuff. Kind of, kind of what I'm saying is, I, I think we're going to have to start tackling some things as projects rather than just be going out there and trying to work on things. That's a little, uh, and that will probably help quite a bit. Uh, I do. We had a couple people that are already helping me, and you all were out of town. Joe and I went up to do some work at Methodist North, and it probably took us about twice as long as it would have. But uh, and we didn't get everything done what we wanted to. But we got the uh, <coughs> APRS repeater going. It worked great for three weeks. <coughs> it's not working again. I gotta go back there and figure out what's going on. Um, the A2 seems to be working okay. Still, a, the sensitivity out on the edge kind of goes in and out. Sometimes Piperton people are scratchy, sometimes they aren't. Uh, probably do some sort of uh, desense test at some point. But for now, I'm not trying to tackle that problem. Um, back. Okay. So, been thinking a little bit, especially since W4LET is being decommissioned, the big DMR repeater in town. And I know others are putting up DMR repeaters. Uh, Barry in Arkansas put one up. Uh, MARA's got one going. They seem to like it. Uh, and uh, we, we would like, I'd like to propose that we do one also. Uh, you get some redundancy. You know, kind of like when if one repeater goes down, there's somebody else. Plus, it's a good <coughs> club experience. Uh, right now, 443.7 is at the Brunswick Tower. It's at the 500 feet level. It's neck. The antenna is next to the old A2. Uh, I, it wasn't working that great, I didn't think, and I bumped the squelch down on it a couple months ago. And after talking to the KOG folks in West, he said the two X's you could run in full power. So I bumped the power up, and it seems to do pretty well. You can hit it from inside here. Uh, so that was just kind of to figure out what's going on. Uh, the antenna, I uh, sent it off a picture of it to somebody, and it's a ComSpec DB420. If you look it up on the internet, that's a $3,000 plus dollar antenna. Um, a lot of that is from Steve Pickle. He's the silent key. He was a Channel 24 engineer, and he put all that stuff up for us. He, he was responsible for us getting out there. So never met the guy. Don't know who he is. But he's very thankful for the work that he done. Uh, I've done some my own testing. I hooked up a uh, audio recorder to my scanner. My house. I'm only two miles from the repeater. I drove around and you can stand outside, 11 miles out, and get into it. So it's doing pretty good. I was out there at Hickory with, uh, got into it, went up to Brighton, 
Uh, a tow gun could get in fine. Um, I was talking to Tyler on it. He was on 385. Uh, it's probably our best site if we want to do DMR. Everything else is just too low. Um, we don't have internet access there, but we, uh, we, we can solve that problem. Uh, we're either looking at a fiber connection or a uh, T-Mobile hotspot that you can get pretty cheap for uh, charity use or in a 501c3. Um, I think that's what the handwind guys are using to route their handwind stuff onto the internet. And it works at 10 bucks a month. It's not too bad. Um, next slide. Can I say something about DMR real quick? Yes, sir. I made this pitch the other night at MARA. It's more than just the hobby piece. It's another emergency communication system. Being, it's not just a local site. It connects and goes out. And if you have anything that goes bad, most of y'all know me. I've been there for 30 years. If anything goes bad, all kind of resources are going to come in this direction. And being able to have something that talks all across the world. When I was in Maui, I was talking to somebody in Tennessee on my, on my hotspot. So I'm about the emergency piece of it, and that's what we do a lot of. I appreciate that you're bringing this up to, to yeah. help get it done. We plan on, um, yeah, it'll have the National Weather Service talk group static on it, uh, like the other repeaters in the area have. So we'll be part of that. Um, coverage map does pretty good to the north, so it goes into Tipton County. Um, it's a lot like the LET coverage, only shifted eight miles north. Um, I've done some of the map, splat map stuff, and I don't have everything up here, but uh, if you live in Collierville, you're not going to get in on the handheld. And it'll be spotty as a mobile, but if you put up a 16 foot and 10 inch or house, you'll get in fine. Uh, that's predictive. I may have to eat my words on that, but <laughs> the closer you are, the more success. Um, <coughs> I know, so purchasing a repeater, there's a, uh, depends on who you talk to. Uh, people have been buying uh, used XPR 8300s, 8, 8400s. 8, uh, there's a caveat on those. You buy them, you take the risk of getting them, but some people have had pretty good luck. Marion folks, uh, they got their 8300 up and running. It was awesome for about two weeks and the finals went out because they're old radios and they're mobiles in a repeater. Uh, the newer ones are the 5700 Motorola's. Um, they're pretty good repeaters, um, but I've seen them used. You can get the new ones for not much more. Um, so they're, they're kind of hard to find because a lot of them are still under service contracts or the, the new thing so they get swiped up like an APX or something like that. Um, the price for those, I was like, I, I don't have a quote yet from ComServe. I imagine it's going to be around 3500 That's my guess, because that's what I see a lot of online. But hey, if nothing else, you can go to Granger and pick one up for almost less 4,400, but that's going to be the max, but uh, I think it's going to be around 3,500 for one. Um, we got plenty of money. We got plenty of money. Yeah. Um, next slide. Now for cool pictures. Uh, I took this from uh, one of the parks in Bartlett, about a mile away with an SLR. Uh, I figured this out from watching some of Barry's presentations. 
I went back five years and found them all. Uh, this is about 500 feet up. This is a platform. When this tower was built, you could take an elevator up to this platform. And you could squeeze out between these uh, coaxes and get out onto the platform. No thanks. Uh, the elevator's broke now, so, uh, but Tim, one of our previous trustees, like 10, 15 years ago. Tim Morrow. Tim Morrow, he was a uh, radio guy for the city of Memphis at the time. Uh, he went up there. Uh, this is the old A2. Uh, the new one's like a couple hundred feet above this picture. Uh, and then right there is the 440 repeater. Uh, look at that picture, like I say, it appears to be a comms, uh, a Comscope DB420, uh, which is it's like a $3,000 antenna. Uh, and it's got like 11 dB a gain because it's an 8 bay double folded dipole. So it is, it's good. Uh, the only thing about it is uh, it's, they don't sell them in the ham bands, so this has probably been tuned a little bit to get it to work in the hand band. So the SWR is a little bit higher maybe than normal, but it's still under two, so good enough. Uh, next slide. This is kind of the current coverage, not too bad. Uh, it's theoretical. I can't key it up in a handheld tire though, but once I get up into this area. But I, I think that you'll see pretty good coverage out uh, in the area. I know I've talked to the KK4I OH and he lives over there in West Memphis. I've talked to him on the 440 repeater, full quieting. So uh, I think uh, Tyler, and I talked to you when I heard you key up and I was in South A. He, he was coming up here and hit a high spot and then dropped down. So. It's scattered there, but it, it at least shows that the repeater, if you get high enough, it's sensitive enough to pick you up. Um, next slide. Um, this is with the Motorola. The specs on the Motorola, I'm just taking them and plugging them into this flat map. The Motorola is a lot more sensitive than the DRX. So it uh, has, it receives better. And we're looking at, we had talked about putting an amp on it before we uh, went down to the DMR road. So we're still going to continue to do the amp. And I'll explain why in a second. But like I said, I've been out to around here and getting with a handheld. So if you're in Bartlett, you are on a handheld in your car. Uh, but I, I think once you get further out, you have to have a mobile. But that's true even with the A2. Uh, next slide. Um, so we had a lot of conversation with the board about um, the old A2 hard line. It's still there. Um, what, we were doing some testing with it and getting intermittent results. But after talking to OVO, we think maybe that you just can't hook a rig expert up at a high power tower. Uh, so I'm going to go back. Joe's going to loan me his bird watt meter, which is a little bit more bulletproof when it comes to things. I've got Pat Lane's TDR set up, but if anybody knows how to use an oscilloscope better than I do, I would uh, love to talk to you. Or if you know somebody that does. Uh, hey, other, Huh? Dave Church. Dave Church? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 84 <coughs> What's that? 84 Okay. I mean, thank you. Um, we were wondering if there's a problem with it or not, and not really sure. Talking to Barry here before the meeting, Barry's saying that, they, that the old coax works. They just, y'all have decided to move up to the higher level. Uh, so we, we may be able to do just a switch of the coax. We're not sure until we get things tested out. 
Um, we may be able to piggyback off of the WATN climb. We're not really sure. I ran to the uh, WATN engineer, talked to him for a little bit. He said they might be doing a climb because they've been doing some upgrades on channel 24. So he's got my number. Um, Joe Plunk called the uh, tower climbers for me and uh, they said that they hadn't been contacted by channel 24 yet. So um, tower climbs like $3,000. At least that was in five years ago money. It could be more. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we can catch somebody shimmying up the tower and give them a, a few uh, presidents and that would save us a lot of money. Uh, the current coax antenna is sufficient for implementation. Uh, the new one would get us about 1.5 to 2 dB gain. And you think, that's it? Well, it would also allow us, so this building, imagine along the building, the tower is over here, the repeater is here, the 440, and the 8.2 is at the other end. So this one, the 440 is sitting out in the hall right next to the door and it would give us a chance to move the repeater rack in with the 82, which has its own room. So that's why we were, we were looking at doing that. But um, a lot, that's all going to take time and coordination of this. Uh, Go to the next one, I guess. That's it. Um, how many of y'all have a DMR capable radio, like an Anytone VTEC? Uh, oh, Mr. Motorola over there. When we get down to that road, I, I would be happy that we would we'll do some sort of like maybe a programming session at the meeting or. Uh, programming morning uh, Saturday at McDonald's. M101 class. M101. Uh, we'll make several opportunities, I think, to get everybody up and running because some of y'all may go, I don't know, I don't want to get on USA 3100. I just want to be able to get into the club top group and the uh, National Weather Service. And we can get y'all there. So uh, the cost to get into a DMR for a handheld. I've got a hundred dollar handheld uh, VTEC. A lot of y'all have something similar. The income, two to three hundred dollars, depending on which one you get. I've got a hundred dollar one at the house that works well. It's, it's not as flexible as the ham stuff. Some people love Motorola. It's just it's all what you want. That was three hundred dollars used on the yeah.com. You, you can, uh, yeah, an XPR is probably 7550. It's probably not the E model. Mine's the E. E, okay. But yeah, you can find 7550s, and Motorola doesn't charge for the programming software anymore. So they don't care if you get it from somebody before they charge out the wazoo for it. But, uh, there's uh, some people like the Motorola. I like my VTEC because I like lots of knobs and buttons. And I can change into VFO mode. I can pop into digital and analog mode. And does the auto shift for me. And I got two different types of promiscuous mode. So I, I like it. And it tells me a lot. It does talk or alias, but just whatever you want. There's your stuff out there for everybody. But I mean, is everybody? Well, the question we would ask is, what do people think of DMR? And like I said, I think we can get into it for pretty cheap. So, I mean, the repeater's going to cost you, but I think the uh, the individual cost is not going to be over burdensome. I think you'll get hooked on it. You'll like 
There's no scratchiness. It's clear. I love it. Uh, I, I got a buddy that drives a semi that runs a hot spot in his truck. <clears throat> and I talked to him, and he's in North Carolina one day, Clarksville the next. So you start getting in and talking to people and getting scared and things like that. So uh, I guess do we need to. So a couple of things that I would ask the club. Uh, I would uh, I would ask the club: Is this something the club is interested in doing? Um, and if that is the case, then uh, just let us know. And the other thing is, if we're interested in doing this, are we willing to? Uh, uh, amend the budget that we approved at the beginning of the year because we will have to amend the budget, uh, the club's budget, so that we could potentially purchase their pier. Um, so those are the things that you know to kind of dot the I and cross the T's that we would have to do as a club uh, to do that we were interested in doing this. It would uh, put up a, a second uh, market-based DMR repeater. It would be at a substantial height, so it would be a, a thing that uh, would be a benefit to the community. So I guess what I would say to the club, let's just have um, just a real quick, just as a show of interest, is this something the club is interested in? As club membership here, just raise your hand if you're interested in doing this. Okay. I want to just survey the room and say that was an overwhelming majority that is interested in the... DMR, converting the 443 700 repeater to DMR. So the next question that I would ask the club, and this would require, uh, uh, this is where we talk about action, is are we willing to look at this and, and, and give our repeat, repeater team the ability to execute on this uh, tonight, or do we want them to come back with more information uh, and provide a little more detail? We want to give them the ability to go act, we would ask the club to change the budget and give them a budget to go act with and to start working with. If we want them to come back with exact information, then we, as a club, we we'll need to charge them with, okay, here's what we would ask you to do. Yes, sir? I've got a question on the hot spot. Uh, I heard it quoted at a lot higher price at one time, so I didn't know they'd come down that much. Is that just for nonprofits or what? Yeah, it's actually it's not a good mobile. So, the, so, so take that as the, there's an offering that T-Mobile offers to nonprofit charities, basically, and we qualify as a 501c3 uh, that offers them a, a, a currently it's ten dollars a month for a T-Mobile hotspot. And that hotspot does spit out an Ethernet connection, so we would be able to then connect whatever we would need at the repeater site for connecting to the internet or command and control or uh, whatever we would need at the repeater site. Yes, sir. That's what we're running for the W4EM uh, DMR repeater. We got a T-Mobile. Yep. And then we do have some options at the Brunswick site. We could do T-Mobile uh, hotspot. Um, there's AT&T there that offers dedicated fiber. And just, we've got a lot of options there. Um, the the challenge that we will have to solve the internet is the easiest one to solve for, in my opinion, is the easiest problem for the club to solve at the repeater site. Getting the repeater, getting the amplifier, which, by the way, the club has approved the amplifier for that uh, frequency previously, earlier in the year. So we're good with that. Getting all of those other parts and pieces in place are the harder parts. Solving the internet is the, I won't say it's easy, but it's the, of, of the problems, it's the simpler of them. Yes, John? Uh, wouldn't having internet out there, regardless of a DMR repeater, also aid the repeater team? in being able to manage the repeaters remotely? Absolutely. Yeah, that's... Oh, go ahead. Uh, have you given any thought to running a piece of hard line from where the, it's sitting now back to the room where the A2 is? Because if you abandon that going up the tower, you'll probably never get it back again. Uh... Yeah, the old 7 8 coax. Yeah, the 440 coax. I mean, hard line is going up the tower. Yeah. If you abandon that and somebody you else go sees back it. to A2 and use one from there, the old one, you're going to lose that hard line because 
it's hard to reserve something that's abandoned. That's a good idea of hooking something up yep. to it and running back to the room even if it doesn't really do yep. anything. Keep the mobile on or something. Yeah. I think that'd be a good idea. I, I like that. I have about 350 yeah. feet three quarter hard line. Well, been out in the weather, but it's the end has been taken up as far as I know. Hey, I don't know how much of it's good. Three points, I'm getting it. All right, that would be fantastic. I, I think hard line is well. The hard line we got's been sitting out in the sun for 25 years. <laughs> I, I guess uh, hard line's pretty good. But so that's like why EMR versus uh, fusion or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's a good question. And I know very little about it other than I do have a discard right now. Good question. Well, for one, uh, one of our served agencies is the National Weather Service, and the National Weather Service uh, here in Memphis has their own top group, and they don't do D-Star, they don't do Fusion. So, to a point, DMR is not tied to a radio manufacturer. It is an open standard. It is published to the community. Uh, D-Star is tied to an icon Kenwood uh, family. Uh, System Fusion is tied to the AC family. Uh, not that that's a critical point, but that is a consideration. Uh, one, and I, I was thinking about something like that too. And so with DMR, for those of you that haven't been into it, it's it acts like two repeaters in one. You have two time slots. So if National Weather Service had an activation, everybody would stay off of time slot one except for National Weather Service. But if Joe and I wanted to chat with each other and we didn't care about it because we ain't scared of our neighbors, uh, we would go to the local talk group on the other time slot and chat away and we would not interfere with the National Weather Service. Uh, the other thing is, is that you can have, in DMR, I mean, D-Star and Fusion, if you, your repeaters in local mode, you can connect to other things, but you can only connect to one thing at a time. Uh, I think one of the D-Star repeaters was permanently just about connected to 30 Charlie and was always on. And if you wanted to talk to somebody else in Iowa and disconnect, uh, you took away what somebody else might be listening to. In DMR, talk groups are always on. We have static always on, so you would always have the National Weather Service present on there. We would not take it up or down. Um, and then, the, like I say, the subscriber cost, the, the end user, it's going to be cheaper. But there's not anything to say that we can't do in D Star type projects later at other sites, but that's kind of down the road. So I want to take. Just one second. I want to take a thought and expound upon what Dan was pointing at real quickly because I wanted this is something that is pertinent to the club that I want to share. Planning and steps and how we progress through what we want to do as a club. So looking at kind of what Dan has presented, this is kind of our first step. That doesn't mean it's the last step, nor does it mean it's all of the steps that we will do. One of the things that we need to do as a club is we need to figure out where do we want to go and how do we want to get there? And Dan has got been charged by the club to help lead us on that charge, but he needs help to do that. So this is my silent, very vocal, non-silent plea for people to come forward and step up and help Dan and the guys and gals that are helping Dan with the repeaters plan through the repeater upgrades and the repeater maintenance and how we ask them to serve the club. Uh, we need more help. If we want to move quickly and do things in a, uh, in a, a fashion that is uh, faster, then we need more hands and feet to do that with. And so I'm going to just say, if you want to help and you want to see this get done, contact Dan and reach out to him and say, how can I help? What do you need me to do? And I, he's got a long list of things that he can point you towards and ask you to get done. Uh, so I apologize. You have a question. Um, I just got a D-Star radio and... I've got a hot spot coming in and 
I can cross mode to DMR and all that. But I was always curious, what kind of license is required for DMR if somebody's not a ham? Can they use it or do you have to have a ham license? I just So uh, I'll, I'll take a swag at this and uh, then Dan and anybody else. The DMR transmission is still in the ham band. So to be able to use the DMR transmission, uh, you still have to have a ham license because you're using the ham bands to transmit DMR. Um, DMR, I'll, I'll mangle this a little bit and people will correct me, but it's an encoding. Just like you have an FM encoding, DMR is a digital encoding and it's encoded digitally. And your radio receives that or uh, as Tom, the program is going to show us tonight, there are many ways that you can decode a DMR signal. But the net of it is you're still pulling it out of the RF, and that RF is in the ham band, and to get that RF, you're going to need a ham license. You also have to have a ham license in order to get the registration ID to get on the system. Correct. Okay. You have to be licensed to be registered. That's worldwide. Ham is worldwide. All right. So, do um, um, you have anything else I want to like call to action for you? Absolutely. Um, like you say, there's more projects we can do. This is the beginning. We want to build something that you all like, that's fun. Uh, so things like All Star, Echo Lake, Fusion, just want to sit down and figure out what do we want to do and start engineering some of it. Because like, uh, you know, the Germantown repeater is, uh, it's hooked to All-Star and Echo Lane. You can connect to other repeaters with a handheld with it. Awesome. I don't have time to figure that out. But if somebody else does and can kind of, you know, instruct others on it, just a lot of things like that is, you know, leave the RF to me, but a lot of the computer stuff and things like that, will, you know, a lot of fun tinkering ahead. Fantastic. All right, so now I want to take a moment and uh, call the membership and poll the membership and ask that the membership that's sitting here in the room, what is the action plan that you would like us as the board to do for you as a membership? So I'll open the floor uh, and listen to what the membership for an action plan. Do you want us to go down and come back and say, hey, let's amend the budget. Here's what you got. Um, go forth or uh, anyway. Those are some of the options. Yes, sir. I think we need a, a, a quote to what all the equipment's going to cost before, you know, a budget is fine, but you know, when we get down there, we need to try to see the actual money. You know, 4500 there's a 3300 you know. Uh, so I, I think that is necessary before we go forward because it's a difference of a couple thousand, a thousand dollars. So I think we would need, I had to do that to the fair club. I had to go down that road with them and give them all that information. And so I think we need that to see exactly what we're going to spend. And uh, so it's just not a guess. All right. Any other thoughts, observations, comments? Yes, sir. <coughs> What you mentioned about the uh, ten dollar fee from T Mobile for Hotspot, is that for unlimited bandwidth? Yes, sir. Okay. Because that can really change the price to the Yes, sir. It sure can. Thanks for that. Any other questions or observations? From the membership? All right, so to kind of put this into an action plan, I'm going to ask uh, from the membership, I would entertain a motion from someone in the membership for uh, you to ask for us to come back and get all of the information and the quote put together to pursue putting a DMR repeater on the 443700 frequency. Um, so, so I'm sorry? So move. All right, we have that motion made and seconded. Second. All right, and we got multiple seconds on that. So I think that was made by Dan. Dan, seconded by Richard. All in favor of having the 
club go forward to get full quotes and pricing to move and pursue putting a DMR repeater on the 443700 repeater. Please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. The motion carries. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. I have a more itemized list by the day. I was hoping to, to go through the owner and not through a salesperson. So I have to ping them a lot to get information because he's going to do it as a pretty good cost. So thank you all. All right. Thank, thank you, Dan. So here's what I'd like, everyone. If we could take, like, let's take a... Let's take a seven minute break and reconvene at five minutes after the hour. We'll give John his the DMR presentation that he's got. And then we'll skip the break between the presentations. And after John's done, we'll go right into the photo and hunt's work. So 